I, I, I agree with you 100%. You see, when people start to get educated, they begin to ask questions. Questions, yeah. And if you have the politicians from those parts who don't want to be asked questions, they don't want to, anybody asking them questions. They just want to run the show as they so desire. They, will, they, they can have a policy not to get these people educated. Talking about this, the way things are in our country. See, I, I, I want to dive into the, the impact of federal character in Nigeria society, okay? In politics, in civil service, in whatever, is, has federal character has been Wait, has it been good wrong with or bad for Nigeria? Okay, um, federal character is something that requires careful implementation. Okay, it is also not something that is meant to be permanent. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. Okay. Now, when you put together society made up of people, different communities and groups with different backgrounds, you're going to have certain level of inequality. Uh, and we've seen that this in any heterogeneous society from Nigeria to America, you see that. So you see subgroups within the society that are not well-educated, subgroups that are not well-placed in, uh, in the running of affairs of the country. So what, what federal character seeks to do uh, is also what things like uh, affirmative action yeah. sought to do in America yeah. in, those, in those early days, you see. But I think we have lost focus in the course of implementing. You see, when you are implementing a policy like federal character, you are also looking at what created those inequalities in the, the first, first place? Instance. Yeah. So that you are beginning to heal the foundation of those inequalities as you go along. If a group is not well educated, and that is what makes them disadvantaged, it means you need to address education in that place, not to permanently put them in a situation of whether you score five or you score. 50 just come because you are from a particular yeah. no and that's what's hap happening in nigeria that is what is happening in nigeria we have now turned what should be an opportunity to build the foundation for equality into an opportunity to perpetuate mediocrity yeah so uh when you say oh because you are from this state Therefore, ten percent is enough for you to enter a university. You're telling people from that state that they are dumb. Interestingly, the people are happy to be dumb. Otherwise, what should have happened is to upgrade, upscale that fundamental problem that you that created that inequality, so that they begin they become competitive with their other people, and they don't need that affirmative action any longer. Yeah, we have not done that. Rather. We have perpetuated mediocrity in the name of federal character. Yeah. And we, it, I agree that there is hardly, that there is no part of Nigeria you go that you will not see a good candidate. But what is important to see is that over several years, some part of Nigeria have remained, uh, have remained, uh, uh, I don't know, how to poor in every indices of development. And nothing more has been done to help them get out of that hole. Rather, we are looking for a privileged situation to put them in the mainstream of affairs. That is not the way to go. The way to go is clear the foundation and let them become competitive with the other people. Okay. See, Salon, uh, I, in 1990, Seven. My MBA lecturer, uh, 
my marketing MBA lecturer. Uh, ooh, I can't remember remember his name. Uh, he's from Ondo. Okay. He ag I, he addressed this issue because some people were were angry about people from the north having advantage because of further character. Okay. And he said this. He said, no, let's leave it so that more people from that region will be educated. And in time, when people tell them to go and do this, they will be able to think and say, okay, bring your son, let him lead us. Once your yeah. son is leading us in front to fight, we'll go and fight. Okay. All right. Now, 1996 is uh, how many years? 28 years, is it? Or 20 what? Okay. Uh, 26 yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So that's nearly three decades. And, and remember, this affirm affirmative action started way before. Correct. Okay. So at least we have had two generations. Okay. They have been on this affirm affirmative af action. Yet, they are even worse than before. Yeah. They, they have more people below the poverty line. Right. They have more people below the minimum education. I mean, so when, when would they be able to stand up? It seems to me, it seems to me, it's a deliberate action from politicians to, to keep the youths of this region in perpetual illiteracy and under the poverty, the poverty line so that they can use them for whatever they want. I, I, I agree with you 100%. You see, when people start to get educated, they begin to ask questions. Questions, yeah. And if you have the politicians from those parts who don't want to be asked questions, they don't want to, anybody asking them questions. They just want to run the show as they so desire. They, will, they, they can have a policy not to get these people educated because that way you can repress them and use them for your purpose as you so desire. Look, if um, in, in, in Northern part of Nigeria today, when people send their children abroad to study, okay, let's even start from the idea of the so-called Boko Haram. Yeah. So say Boko Haram means Western education is uh, it's an abomination or something like that. It is forbidden. But in the real sense, Ask yourself, forbidden for who? Because the children of the elite in the north are well educated. Exactly. They ensure that their children go to school here in Nigeria and they go abroad. Abroad. To study. So, for who is Boko now haram? <laughs> so, Boko is haram only for the children of, of the poor yeah. and not for their own children. Yeah. When their own children go abroad, do you know that it is southern children that go abroad and stay abroad? Yeah. They know. They ensure that those children they come back. Yeah. Because things are waiting for them along. They're still riding the 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 uh, uh, privileged uh, uh, elite parental that they have. If you have education, they know that anything is possible for you for the children of the elite from the north. So their children will come back, take beautiful position, and continue the agenda. So it, it is something that. Leadership can change when we're able to have, uh, uh, when, when the not, as the North begin to change leadership towards more positive ones. Like what, what, what we saw with, uh, uh, I might not be a big fan of El Rufai when it comes to how, how he managed the insecurity part of things. 
uh, I, I believe he didn't he didn't anchor it properly, especially at the outset of, of that problem. But when you look at what he has done in certain other areas, especially in human development and education in that place, um, you 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 will give it to that guy. Okay. And the, the country needs more leaders like him, or more leaders like the the, the former mayor of Kano who continue to raise very critical I, I, I love that man. I love that man. But you know, the system got him. That's yeah, I know. <laughs> it, 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 it so, I know. But those, those are the things that would change the norm. Those are the kind of things. That change the norm. Well, um, see, I, I, I've had a young man from Kanu, oh my God, what's his name now? Uh, oh, sorry, I've, I've forgotten your name. Uh, he he was on, on on this podcast, and this young man wants other young people in his neighborhood to have the education that he has. Mm. Got, mm. See. Because he, see, he sees the value of being able to step back, think about things, and ask questions. Correct. He can think for himself. He can decide what to do. Hmm. He, can, he can decide, okay, I will take anything that Bola Hon says. But then it is his decision. Correct. Okay. That decision, that decision is not because he doesn't know how, know how to. Okay. So uh, I really, really, really want, I don't know. See, I, I really want a country to be more, to give more opportunities to our young people from anywhere they come from. You know? Right. Yeah.